Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. Today I'm going to look at the newest updates to Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw and talk about a couple of little tweaks in here specifically for wildlife photography right after this. <laughs> I'm just going to jump right in here for the sake of time. I'm going to show you the old version of Lightroom. So this is an older out, output. Today, I'm going to be working in Adobe Camera Raw. For my personal workflow with wildlife photography, I work in Photoshop, and I do these, these Lightroom edits in the Camera Raw filter. Now, I'm going to show you that in a minute, but just so there's no confusion, if you whether you're using Lightroom or editing in the Camera Raw editor, as a plugin or a filter, it's it's the same engine. So these are interchangeable. The layouts are very, very similar. In the past, they were a little bit different. They've done a really nice job getting these uh, integrated to be pretty much identical. So whether you're in Camera Raw or Lightroom, you should be you should be able to bounce back and forth to either one and be very comfortable with what you use. I will say if you're doing the updates, and we're going to talk about the newest update for Camera Raw, uh, they do update independently of each other. So you do have to update your camera raw separately and update Lightroom separately. If you update one, it does not update both, but it is the same engine behind it. Now let's just look at the old layout and I'm going to show you two tools that we, we're going to talk about today. And this is the healing brush right here. And just notice how many options there are when I click that healing brush icon. And then down here under this new and improved mask menu. So the last version over the summer of 2022, did some really nice features around masking probably the best updates they've done around masking and here you can see where they are select subject select sky we're going to be talking about a couple of the changes in these masks now so i'm going to close down lightroom and i'm now going to go over to photoshop and open that up real quick so i opened up photoshop because i'm going to use the camera raw filter now don't be intimidated if you don't use photoshop everything i'm going to show you in the camera raw filter is virtually identical to what you would use in Lightroom. So if you only use Lightroom, everything that I show you here is applicable. I'm only gonna be working in the camera raw filter. I wanted to show you both applications. So I, I started with Lightroom, I kind of showed you the layout. And remember I showed you there was only one healing option. I'm gonna show you three healing options with the new software uh, 15.0. So I showed you the healing tool in the other application in Lightroom before I updated it. And when once it's updated, you're now gonna get three options. You're gonna get content aware, remove, you're gonna get a healing tool and you're gonna get a cloning tool. I'm gonna to show you real quickly how these operate. The content aware remove tool is actually supposed to take, and I say supposed to, it's supposed to take a subject like this and just use this background to fill it in. Now notice I don't have sticks and branches in the way. This is a pretty clean image. Didn't do a great job. I, ex I, I expected a little bit more from this. There's a content aware tool in Photoshop that also works very similarly. It's very hit and miss. Sometimes it works incredibly, sometimes it does not. So I, I didn't love the content aware uh, remove, at least on this bird, and I've tried it on other images. This was the, the I thought this one would work the best because the background is so separate from the bird. I don't have, again, I don't have sticks and branches in the way. So yeah, that one didn't work too well. I'm going to move my head out of the way and I'm going to try to just show you down in this corner. Let me use that content aware fill. So I'm going to go to the, the, the menu, the healing menu. I'm going to go to content aware. Let me see if content aware will replace this dark area with, with maybe another pattern. Again, it's artificial intelligence. So it's going to, it's going to look around and find stuff and try to fill it in. And it's the patterns just don't look natural. So again, I'm going to show you an application where content aware did a great job, but, but I'm not finding that it creates these natural large replacements, these areas. Let's try the healing tool. Maybe this will work a little bit better. In fact, I know it will, cause I've played around with it a bunch already. I'll, I'll explain the difference between the heal and the clone. Also, when you take a selection for healing, so I'm, this is the selection, it's going to go out and grab a sample. So it's, you can see it just grabbed an area and it doesn't work. You can drag that sample around until you find an area that makes it look good. And the way that the healing tool will work is it's going to take and kind of average the sample that you're grabbing with the area that was there and think of it like blending it together. So it's using artificial intelligence and it's kind of saying, what should this work? What should this look like? I find the healing brush to be really, really good at large replacements. So when you're just taking a big area or a medium sized area, 
um, and replacing it with another pattern, it does a pretty good job. So you could see that that one worked pretty good. What didn't work particularly well, or what won't work particularly well for this is the clone. And here's why. So I'm gonna select a similar area down in here. And when the clone tool works, it takes a copy. Let me turn this opacity up to 100. You can see the only sliders here are the size of my brush. So the size and the feathering of my brush. That's, that's really all that I can control. Or I should say the, the feathering of the sample. So you could see this is the feathering kind of around the edges here. But it takes an exact copy, exact copy, a clone, a, a cloned copy of a perfect copy and puts it into the new area. So when you're dealing with patterns, a lot of times this won't work because the pattern from one area of the image may not match the other area. So the healing brush to me is a really good use to replace you know, small areas, medium sized areas of one pattern with another pattern. Didn't like the content aware replace. That's the new one. Didn't like that as much. So I reset my camera. I've got the image back. I'm gonna switch over and I'm gonna show you some of the mask changes. Two major mask changes we're gonna talk about today is the background and object. We've had subject and sky available for a while. Subject select really has done a nice job. You can see it finds a subject. It's getting better and better. I think the algorithms are actually working better. It's actually starting to find little, little feathers and hairs around the outside edges that it used to struggle with. Uh, here's a great example. You could see it right in there. And again, you can always refine these. So I can take the, this subtract icon, use the brush. And if it, if it misses or goes over a little bit, I can just clean it up manually. But again, it's doing a really, really nice job. So pretty happy with subject select. The one that they've added now is background select. Basically background select. And I'll show you here. If we were to take this subject select, and invert it. We've always had the ability to do that, by the way. It's just an extra step. Notice what it does. It selects everything except the subject. It's the inverse of the subject select tool. So it works really, really well. Well, guess what? Essentially, that's what the background selection is. I'm going to take this layer. Remember, this is subject invert. I'm going to pull the exposure down by four. Now I'm going to create a new mask and I'm going to select the background. And you'll see without having to select the subject in inverse, it did the same thing. I'm gonna take this mask and pull it up four, four, and essentially now there's two masks on here that balanced each other out, one negative four and one positive four. And the reason I did that is just to, to literally show you that when you click the background select icon, it is literally just doing a subject select and an inverse for you. The algorithm is not different. It's not doing a different calculation you're looking at the original image with two masks that offset each other perfectly. And the only way for that to happen is if the background selection, the background mask is the inverse of subject select. I think this demonstrates it pretty clearly that that's what it does, but it is convenient. And I do like having it as an option right there. And again, when you go up to this, uh, when you go into the mask menu, it's really, really nice because it's it's just simple. It's a nice icon. It's easy to find and easy to use. And there it is right there. There's one more in here that says objects. So this is a newer one that we can just quickly demonstrate. It's going to bring up a selection option with a brush. You can control the size of the brush. The nice thing about this is you don't have to be super detailed. I'm going to show you this rock. Like let's say I just wanted to change the exposure or texture of the rock wanted to make the rock brighter or darker or change the temperature, it's a real quick way to pick one part of the image. So that's one way to do it. Now, I could also go to this object and let's say instead of subject select, I had two birds there. If I use subject select, there's a good chance it's gonna pick both. I just wanna pick this bird. Watch how sloppy I am with this selection. I'm not even trying to make it perfect. I'm even gonna leave some of it totally undone. It's gonna calculate and refine it. And it did that just as well as it did with subject select, only it's now one object instead of more than one object. So again, if I have multiple birds in here, it does all of that. Now, the biggest change for masks actually had nothing to do with wildlife photography. We won't even see it in our options. And it's right down here under people. 
the biggest change to this update was actually around the ability to find people and find parts of the people. So for example, it can find eyes and faces and irises. It detects all of those things independent of each other. So if you're a portrait photographer, you're out there shooting people, you will find this to be actually the best part of this entire update. But for wildlife photographers, there are a couple of nice things in here with object and background selection being two of them. I'm gonna open one more image because this one has a lot of sticks in it and I really wanted to test this new update in the, in the heel brushes. Most of the time with, with stick removal, I will do this in Photoshop. But again, a lot of people aren't using Photoshop. You can do this in Lightroom. I'm gonna do it in Camera Raw, but remember everything I'm doing in Camera Raw is identical to Lightroom. Might look just slightly different, but for the most part, even the layouts are the same. So we're gonna go to the heel brush. And I, again, it, Photoshop is complicated. It, there's, you could study Photoshop for the rest of your life and still learn things. What I try to do uh, on my Patreon site is to break down the parts of Photoshop that you really need as a bird photographer and teach that to you. So if you are interested in, in getting into Photoshop, check out the link down below. I'll put a description for Patreon with a link there and you can just check that out. I really do try to make it very simple and, and super, super practical. If you've seen my other videos, you know that everything I do is less about the technical and more about the practical. So let's see, practically, can we, can we use these new tools in bird photography or wildlife photography or just image removals for uh, image removal applications. All right, so I'm going to start with this content aware removal. I'm going to start with a small area, just, just that little cluster there. You can see it works. Uh, it leaves these little, couple little artifacts, but it, it did the job. Let's try, um, yeah, let's hit the heel brush. There we go. Let's try this healing brush, which I told you, I think works the best for me. You get to sample the area you want to pick from. I'll sample an area like that. And that one looks really, really good. And then we'll just for the sake of this, we'll do clone. I'm not going to use clone um, much after this because you could see with clone, it's really hard because it is doing an exact sample of color and it doesn't average those colors in. So when you pick an area, it just stands out. So small removal, pretty good. There's another small removal up here. Let's pretend we wanted to get rid of these, these little, this little bud. Let's start with clone on this one. And I'm going to, fortunately, I've got an area that looks pretty similar right there. Remember, it's an exact duplicate of the sample. So I take that sample and you could see right around the edges, it just doesn't match up because the colors aren't averaging in. It's taking the exact color from the sampled area and stamping it, copying it to the new area. And then around these edges, it's a little bit off. So it didn't, it, it looked okay, but it definitely, you can definitely tell. I would expect heel to do a little bit better job. So let's try heel. Because remember, heel should average those colors in around the outside. So let's go right here. And you can see it does. So right around the outside, these colors were averaged in and they look much more natural. This transition area doesn't look too bad. That would pass to the naked eye for most people. You'd really have to pixel peep and know that you did it to detect that. All right, so let's undo that. Now, remember before I didn't love this content aware remove. I just didn't think it did a very good job with subject removal. By the way, again, down in the comments, if you are having success with this, let me know. But I found some applications where it worked incredibly well. So if I take this little thing and let content, look at that. Wait, Content aware was flawless. Not only did it average out the colors, it made the transition nice and smooth there and it didn't duplicate the patterns from other areas. So by far, this was the easiest and best replacement and it did a great job. Now let's see, well, if it did such a good job down there, let me get out of there. Every now and then you click a wrong button. Let's go back here and let's see if it did such a great job on the small one. Maybe it'll do a great job on this whole stick here. Let's see. Artificial intelligence, it's doing it automatically. And there you could see those patterns again. So down at the, you don't even have to look too close to see it, but you can tell just right in here, it just creates these artifacts. So yeah, content, content aware replace. It did a great job on some applications like this little area here. In the larger removals, which is what I thought it would be great at, kind of what Adobe led me to believe would be the primary uh, function for this and where it would really stand out, I didn't find it to be that great. So sure, little areas like this little black dot up there, I'm sure it'll have no problem getting rid of that. 
it may be down here. There's a little stick down there. Maybe it would get rid of that. But it just seems to leave these little artifacts. So overall, I liked, I think I liked the uh, the heel the best for most applications. But there do, there does seem to be some applications where that that content aware remove worked really, really, really well. So not a lot for wildlife photography in this update. I would say the addition of the background icon made it simpler to, to select the, the background. That was great. The curves, I didn't dig a lot into the curve adjustment mask, but just know now that when you mask your subject or your background, you can make adjustments using the curves, which is really, really nice. It gives you the ability to go into the red, green, and blue channel and work independently in highlights and shadows. For those, for those of you that have done any kind of color grading, uh, that could be a really welcomed addition to your workflow. And then when it came to those new heel tools, I found that some of them were pretty good in very specific applications. For the most part, I didn't notice a significant change. And I thought that that heel brush was really the most powerful one to replace distractions and to remove distractions. And that was really similar to the old version. So not a ton in that content aware application that I thought worked really well, but I found one or two examples and I showed you one here where it was absolutely flawless and super, super, super easy to use. So when it works, it's a slam dunk. The problem is I didn't find that it worked well all of the time. I'll list the summary of some of these quick changes over here. Uh, I'll put a link down below for the full list of from Adobe of their updates in this version, 15.0, where you're going to find the most benefit is for portrait photographers and for those people that are photographing people. But for those of us that prefer wildlife and we like those animals and birds, there's a couple little things in here for you. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for tuning in. If you're not subscribed, hit down low. And that little bell, that's the reminder. So when I put out these videos once every week or two, I don't inundate you. Hit that little bell. You'll get a reminder that I got a new video out. As always, thanks for your support. And I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.